Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the latest episode of the Hard Compound uh, Live. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, my name's Rich, and I run and operate the Hard Compound. We're a one-stop shop for all things motorsport, uh, four wheels, two wheels, roof, no roof, on-road and off-road. Um, and we are, and we can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So do search for the Hard Compound on any of those platforms. Uh, give us a follow. Uh, hit that notification bell on Twitter. Add the Hard Compound to your hashtags so you don't miss out on all the good motorsport stuff uh, that we try and bring you. Um, that's in the form of uh, race reviews, uh, race previews, um, our our favourite cars and bikes, um, any uh, any throwbacks. Um, any breaking news, uh, such as uh, Adam Morgan, who's joined West Surrey Racing in the BTCC today. Uh, congratulations to him. Um, and much, much more besides, including uh, live video interviews with our favourite drivers and riders from past and present. Uh, these are all uh, streamed live as we are now on Facebook, Twitter and our YouTube channel. And they're automatically saved as soon as we're finished. So uh, if you want to uh, go onto our YouTube channel or onto our Facebook page in the video section, you'll see all the interviews that we've done in the past. And we've had some fabulous guests on um, over the last couple of years. Um, from the two-wheeled world, world um, just last week, we spoke with uh, Mr. Terry Reimer. And we've also spoken with uh, James Tosland. We've spoken with the likes of uh, uh, Shane Byrne, um, uh, Bjorn Eshman, Chris Nidden, and uh, Ryan Vickers, among others. Uh, from the world of uh, single-seater sports cars and the like, we spoke with Mr. Terry Fullerton, the uh, the man that Ayrton Senna called his uh, greatest rival uh, of his entire career. Uh, we've also spoken with um, uh, Mario Andretti and Jackie X, which is a real, real honour. We've had chats with uh, Mr. Derek Warwick, um, uh, Stephanie Johansson, uh, uh, David Brabham, Alex Caffey, Mark, uh, Mark Blundell, um, em, uh, Emanuele Piro, Carl Wendlinger, uh, Mika Salo, Ari Lyondike, Willie T. Ribs, Danny Sullivan, Alonzo Jr., Linson James, uh, Will Power, Brian Herter. Uh, we've also spoken with uh, Paul Page and many, many others. Uh, but if you are tuning in tonight, you're probably a fan of the touring cars, and why wouldn't you be? Um, we've spoken with uh, some of the drivers past and present from the British and World Touring Car Championships. Uh, the likes of, um, uh, we've spoken with uh, uh, Dick Bennett, the boss of uh, West Surrey Racing, and Justina Williams, the boss of Accelerate Motorsport. We've spoken with uh, Tom Chilton, Jake Hill, uh, Rick Parfit, Jade Edwards, Chris Smiley, uh, Frank Sittner, Rob Grabbit, Steve Soper, John Cleland, um, Gabriele Tarquini, uh, uh, Ricard Rideau, Andy Prio, and many, many other touring car legends, which brings us very nicely onto this evening's guest. He is definitely uh, in the uh, legend bracket, um, four time world touring car champion. Um, um a uh, btcc champion just the once absolutely bafflingly um he's raced at 24 hours of le mans he's uh, currently uh, preparing for the trophy andros uh, right uh, ice racing he's raced in uh, supercars world rally championship everything um an absolute legend very very excited to speak with him so without any further ado we're going to bring him in right now please join me in extending a very very warm welcome to mr ivan muller and there we are Ivan, how are you? Good evening. Oh, 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 I think the sound went there. Are we all good? Yes, I think we're all good. <laughs> okay, you hear me well? Yes, that's fine. I think there's a slight delay from the picture to the sound, but it's no problem at all. Um, Ivan, um, thank you very, very much for coming uh, and joining us. I know a lot of people. Uh, I've been looking forward to this one. So thank you very much for coming to speak with us this evening. I really appreciate it. Uh, wonderful. So uh, you're um, so you're there all uh, getting prepared for uh, for the Trophy Andros uh, Ice Racing with you know, some fantastic names. And we're going to come to that uh, very shortly. Uh, I just want to say hello to some people in the comment section. If you do have any comments or if you have any questions, do put them in the comment section. Um, we've got uh, Thomas Day is in, Diffan Evans, uh, Nick Hunt, Stephen Sherwood, Scott Addison, uh, John Kane, many, many others. Thank you for joining us, guys. Any questions, do put them in the uh, uh, in the uh, comment section and we'll try and uh, work them in. Um, so, uh, yes, right, that's me rambling and I've stopped now. So, um, uh, firstly, uh, yeah, how's everything uh, going in the preparation for uh, this weekend? Uh, I've to us, you know, for the first uh, um, it, it has been a uh, last two months because uh, to prepare, you know, ice race is 
something very complicated. The logistics is very complicated. Now we are in Valterus, so we are owning the heaters, the floors, etc. And uh, tomorrow night, absolutely, we will start to drive. Um, Fantastic. We'll get down to the real business, <laughs> the business of racing. Um, no, good. That's excellent to hear. Obviously, it's a, you know, it's a fantastic event uh, that's happening this weekend. Um, but if I may, I'd like to um, start right back at the start. Uh, how did you first um, get involved with um, with like, motor racing? Because it was in your family a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. My father was uh, in the high claim racing. Uh, I saw my sister, uh, Cathy Miller. She was with him all the time, and one day, by hazard, she she drive on karting. So my father went on karting, and uh, COVID. So then when they came back home, he, then he took a license, and she did a race, etc. And, and I just I just follow with, uh, uh, and uh, I just uh, and. Of course, uh, I like it that, that I have my feet long enough to touch the pedal. So as soon as you were able to uh, get your foot on the pedals, you were in the cart and you wanted to basically do what your sister had been doing. Fantastic. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to start. You know, if you're from like a motorsport family, then it, uh, then it certainly helps, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I started. I was nine. Uh, I'm 53 now, so I do 44 lives this, this year. Wow, God, um, and you and you work your way through uh, through the karting uh, ranks, obviously um, uh, there in France. Uh, I've got here that you um, you won the French Cadet Championship in 1981. Uh, you've moved on to the and then obviously you moved up to the world, you know, to the world junior karting series. Came second, nineteen eighty six. Um, took the second in the French elite um, series in nineteen eighty seven. I mean, it, karting has been a great starting point for so many um, drivers who have gone on to do great things, whether it be in touring cars or in sports cars or Formula One. Um, I guess it was a very enjoyable time for you going racing. Yeah, absolutely. And it was the only way uh, to race with four wheels. Uh, you had uh, uh, it was impossible to race, in, especially in France or, or Europe, except UK. It was not possible for eight months to race. It was only one possibility. It was, that was a, a very good school, of course. Because we live uh, uh, in karting from uh, the to to, uh, to world championship in eight years, and, and, and that uh, all all look for the rest of my career. Wow, it's fantastic! It's just yeah, you know, I sort of love the fact that you just wanted to race anything with four wheels. I I I love that. It's just that once the motorsport bug kind of bites you it's it's there and you just want to race and um i mean just a quick word i mean i mentioned in the intro that we spoke with like terry fullerton who is like the legend of karting um it's um it's a shame that it's getting to be quite expensive isn't it to move up through the karting these days i mean it, um it it kind of feels like that like young drivers are being priced out of going racing right from the start which which is a shame, and I think he's. I think Terry's trying to do his best to keep those costs down. I mean, if you were starting racing now, would you go through the karting <laughs> route, or do you think you try and find another way? Uh, unfortunately, there is another way, but of course, karting good because the budget or the cost and is too, too high, and that's why a lot of guys. Uh, uh, goes to, to uh, cars at 40, yeah. 
14 or 15 because uh, Ben Carting. Uh, you on his, his time. Um, okay, sitting with my sister, so I saw him uh, every circuit in Europe, and uh, of course, he's on, on karting. And uh, I remember to, to time the course was uh, uh, very uh, possible for almost everybody, and uh, and that is the same thing, but alive as well. So uh, we have to play not much. Choice, but uh, uh, yeah, I think the last 20 years the, the, the cost uh, went up uh, dramatically. Of what I, I saw, because I'm still uh, no, I am the captain of the karting team, uh, uh, there is now some series with, with a low budget. Okay, okay everybody got the same car, the same tires. And you can do it like this. So there is things is coming uh, uh, to race with with a car. Yeah, not sure. And it just feels like the you know like the karting. You know, it's it's getting as expensive as the cars, as you say. You know, and guys are just going straight into car racing at a young age. But yeah, I mean, it's been a good proving ground, and it's where you learnt your. Um, it's where you learnt your. Know, your craft, your trade. Um, were, were you always planning on going into single seat racing at that time? Was it there and then up to Formula One? Was that where your eyes were were looking? I was a Formula One uh, uh, um, and uh, the target uh, for me. Was, but uh, quite quickly when I arrived at the door, Formula One, I realized, especially when I arrived there, uh, at that five or six French driver, uh, it was not much space uh, for another French driver. Plus, the French, it was a lot of French driver, which was so quickly. Uh, I went direction, and I realized. There is uh, 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 outside of Formula One. It's a nice life outside of Formula One. Yeah, absolutely. It's not the, uh, it's not you know, it's not the be all and end all of racing. Um, I've just seen a couple of comments actually. Apparently, the the sound is cutting in and out on your end, Ivan. Apparently, I'm not sure what the situation is. Um, apparent uh, Scott Addison. He's just said that. Sound keeps breaking on your end. I don't know if there's anything that, if there's a microphone we can play with or anything. <laughs> I don't know. I can try to, maybe to go uh, a bit uh, close to the. Or is it not? Good. Maybe go to the router. We'll see. Um, if uh, people in the comments, if you can just say if you, uh, if you can hear me or Ivan or both of us um, clearly, then do let us know. Um, I think it might be in the mountains where you are, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's that altitude, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Um, but we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Uh, do, just do let us know. It's um, it seems okay here, but keep 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 us posted, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, your eyes were on single seaters. You moved into cars. Was it in the late nineteen eighties? Didn't it? You moved up into car racing how did that um how how did that come about from the karting or you know, yeah that was, your i think my first my first season in uh, in uh, 1988 uh, it was the french and um i become there because the first level it was awful it was all of order for that time we decided to do some and, uh, and it, it was, uh, it, it, it was something. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was good to go to the. Yeah, it was the way to go. And uh, I've got here that you moved. Um, where were we? You moved into was it French Formula Renault? Um, I think it was that year. You had uh, twelve races and you took three wins, five podiums. And I mean, was that a confidence building kind of start for you in cars? Yeah, absolutely. 
um, podium of the championship for the first season. It, it was a good, uh, uh, good result. Uh, the two leaders uh, uh, of that championship, two guys, they 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 did already. This. So it, it was uh, uh, it was perfect to do better than that uh, for the first season. Yeah. Sure, because like you had those two guys that had more experience, they'd done it before and they were racing. But, but I mean, it's good that you could have, you know, that you got to that, got to that level, you know, the next level up behind them and moved on. Um, I've got here that you went from the 89 to 1991, you had in the French and European Formula Three. Um, how did that move up the ladder come about? Did you meet someone who, who was backing you or was it just, uh, you know, someone? Took a chance on you, or <laughs> in uh, nineteen eighty nine, uh, I did three. Uh, already, I did my own uh, with my sister and both of us. We were in the F three French championship for C Y M three thousand. So, and, um, yeah, and we did pretty well because my first season in. F3, I finished uh, on, uh, on the end of the season, which was a, a very good and, uh, and then 1918, because I did a work on the first season, uh, to uh, um, ask me to, to they pay the budget for me. But I'm not uh, as good as what we a season. I stopped to come back in my own team. The result came back. Right. Well, so, I mean, so you decided to you know start up your own, or come come back as you know self self powered, self sort of funded and everything. Um, I've just for, across those three years though, it says that you just had the was it just just the one race win and um, across the three years in 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 the Formula Three, um, were you getting frustrated at not sort of being perhaps as competitive as you would like or or were you and and were you thinking i need to find a way to maybe move sideways or upwards or with with someone else <laughs> it was very frustrating especially after the first season, which i finished on the podium on the general uh, i i could expect much better second season or even for the third season, the second season, uh, we we did the team at the beginning. Then uh, for the last, my own team, and we won one of the three rides. Yeah, uh, uh, we did decide to choose uh, uh, one chassis brand. Uh, came to me. Uh, we have a chassis and an engine. We give you free, and we were short on budget. But unfortunately, that season, that uh, but that as it is, and uh, uh, okay, okay, the F three, the best period for me. Right, right. So that was just. All right, so, I mean, having gone through, you know, you've gone through that um, that period of, you know, with the budgets and everything. Um, how did the switch to british formula 2 come around i've often wondered this uh you, you came into british formula 2 with um uh our good friend roger um um how did that come about because you'd you'd as you said you had those frustrating years in f3 and then to step up to british f2 were you did you think that the uk was the place you know was was the place to come to uh to go racing and to and, and to forward your career yeah, you know, French uh, championship from Rome, then from to do to go on F three thousand. You pay the budget for that, and uh, I, I don't remember how we met uh, Roger Rodin, uh, uh, but um, we've been in contact with each other. He, he, I was looking for a team. He has a part of of the budget so we did decide to do the f2 um, the formula 2 
can be uh, that year together. And, uh, we won the championship in. Uh, in um, that's amazing to you know to go in there and to win the championship. I, mean, I remember seeing something. Um, I think it was you, and I think it was uh, Jason Elliott and Enrico Battaglia, and was. Peter Cox in there. I can't remember. It was there were some very very strong drivers on that grid, and I remember it was a, the wet race at Silverstone in uh, end of to, coming towards the end of the year where you secured the championship, um, and you and Enrico Battaglia were just like that <laughs> for lap after lap after lap. Um, uh, what what are your memories of that race? Because it was so wet, but and you won the championship. You came second in the race, but it looked great fun. <laughs> yeah, it looked great fun, but um, you know, I, I will never do that again. <laughs> Thirty years younger, uh, and uh, even when I couldn't see the road, or even when wow. it was on track. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, some uh, memories, I think, were crazy to do in time. Right? You mean, with the F3000 car uh, to go over, it, 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 was, uh, it was a bit crazy. And, and side by side. And gradually, uh, uh, we did 60 laps. It was, uh, it was quite, uh, quite amazing. Yeah, it was. I have a lot of memories. It was great, but honestly, yeah, we not do that. <laughs> it's not something you'd go back and do now. You wouldn't. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not thinking that much. So, uh, we... <laughs> Excellent. Um, but, but you finished, I think that race, you finished second, you were you know, really close, but you finished second, but it won you the title, it got the, you the opportunity to go to, was it the Buenos Aires uh, Grand Prix race, um, which you finished eighth. I mean, was was that your first time out of Europe racing? Uh, in cars, in a lot of catching race, uh, with uh, racing cars. Yes, that won, yes. Wow. And you went out there and you finished eighth. So it was quite a big step up, you know, from F2 to F3000. You came eighth, um, which was, again, must have been a confidence booster. And it gave you that sort of, that, that like jump into Formula 3000 series for, um, for the following year with, you know, with, with the same team. But you had quite a small budget, didn't you, for, the, for that season? Yeah, uh, I still don't and uh, we did the full season uh, with the budget Formula 3 budget to do the European Formula and that was uh, uh, well done to our uh, but uh, Roger G was, was passionate and I think he to, to compete and to complete uh, with that budget but then we finished only two races, the first and the last one, uh, uh, um, both in, in the point and the top, the, only the top six. So uh, to play, play for the championship, uh, we are not capable uh, uh, to do. Right. Well, so, and, and, as, and as you say, you, you only finished two races. I mean, there was some retirements in there. and. But you know, you finish, as, as you say, you got points in that final race at um, um, Nagara, wasn't it? In 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 France, obviously on uh, on on your home uh, circuit, I suppose uh, that season. Uh, but I've read somewhere that at the end of that season, you kind of thought that might be it for your you know for your racing career because of budgets and everything. Um, was it close to being the end then? Oh yes, it was. because uh, uh, end of that season, the budget to go further. I took a plane. I went to 
always be in the light or something like that. But I couldn't find anything with the budget I had. Came back from the US and say, okay, uh, 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 in the in the family truck company. So uh, the future will be a truck. And uh, the winter, it was in February, something like that. If the channel from Orica called me, I'm looking for a driver for a uh, certain Jeep. Are you interested? Of course, I am interested. Uh, wow. Okay, we have uh, two days of test. Uh, please come. You eat there. Then we will do a selection of the ten. Fortunately, uh, I was a uh, uh, decision, and I did the season the BMW. Uh, wow. Uh, 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 wow! So it was just that you know. So you've been looking around. There was just that one phone call that came in. Do you want to come and test the car? And then you were into. Um, into BMW, you know, the, with the French super touring season. And um, I mean, had you ever thought about going into touring cars in the, you know, before then? Or was it just something that came up at the time and you thought it's a drive? <laughs> I didn't thought about it because I was so focused on the car. I never thought of, of at that time, touring car or GTs was as well uh, uh, it become uh, but uh, a, a young driver I guess of, of single seat car and, and not my that was uh, that was a mistake and I didn't have choice uh, as I said I did a test I did well and then I was one of the two, two official drivers W driver for uh, for two days. and in addition of that after the first team, team or Africa, they had guys and they say do you want to try I say I don't think I I am capable because I uh, asphalt driver not ice uh, or, or sideways driver I am sure I say. I'm sure you can do it. Me to go to, to to go in the car, and uh, for the first season, I finished pretty, uh, a good result, uh, especially if we drive as I was. Wow, uh, it's strange, obviously, from what you've done since that someone had to kind of convince you that you could do it. You know, it's. Um... Uh, it and obviously it was quite a change from you know from the you know from the high downforce lighter cars to the touring cars and as you said I mean you know you were in uh, you took third in the championship you know like Laurent Aiello won the championship that year um, but you took a couple of wins and some more podium finishes and it and you seem to t take to it really well um, did you then start thinking maybe this is this is like a road I can go down, especially with what happened in 95. Uh, yeah. uh, definitely, because, you, you know, uh, when I start with Orica and then the video probably was the first season, I had not to no sponsor to, to, to take better than that. I was paying to drive. So, uh, okay. That's the way. <coughs> so of course that's it. Forget single seat car and let's race. Another thing maybe in the future to be a professional driver, and now I am one. Wow. So I mean, obviously, you know, you, you know, it was, yeah, just one of those things. It kind of came at the right time, and it was a route that you could go down and. Um, French, yeah, the French Super Touring. You won the championship, um, ninety-five. Uh, I've said you got uh, you got fifteen podiums from twenty-one races. I've got here, from, including nine wins. Um, that must have been a good year. That must have. <laughs> and, uh, 
that was a fantastic season. Uh, we stayed definitely in my in my memory. Yeah, as you said, 15 podiums and 21, uh, nine victories. And uh, again, two years before, oh, up and to be a uh, uh, to be a company. And now I, I am a professional French champion. I have a for a company is BMW and Eureka. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you know, you're driving for a great brand. You've got, you know, you're being paid and <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, very quick. You, you moved from the French series to, uh, to the Italian series with, uh, with Audi for the following year. Um, did you feel like you kind of, you'd like won the French championship, um, and you'd done it and what was, how did, how did you move uh, to Italy in just for that one year? Was it was it to do with Audi coming on board or? It, BMW after uh, 95, uh, they decided to stop the program for the French championship. Right. No more uh, 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 BMW in the French championship for the for uh, only uh, wanted to keep me and uh, uh, a seat. Uh, uh, in the GT championship, but on the same time, I was in Italy. So uh, I took to stay in Turinca with Audi. Uh, um, uh, and this is because to, to live in which they and plus the fact to go with them with my boys. Uh, it was complicated to take, but on the mid and with Audi, it was a nice support. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you get to go racing in Italy, which is never a bad place to go racing. Um, you know, got some great circuits there. I mean, you came fourth overall uh, that year. Um, again, was that another enjoyable year? Um, something different, racing somewhere different, new car, <laughs> a new car. Uh, uh, and uh, but, but even when when Italy, uh, it was clear it was not to go there to win the champion. Uh, my role was to help the, the be a champion. Before that, that he did the, the people, and now it was his turn. So right. That's it. But they say okay we will not win the championship you are here to have a degree or not and i accept it okay you're just there to help out and that's fine you know <laughs> no problem um the following year you moved uh, to what is now the dtm you know the, um which has changed completely hasn't it um was was that again with audi was that as a development for the for the front wheel drive car or was it just to keep keep the uh keep the program moving but, but during, uh, i was uh, part of the development with, with drive car uh, uh, and uh, at the end of that year uh, i am uh, ready to race in the jeep in germany but with the front wheel drive i like this this kind of challenge, uh, I see immediately. Okay, let's go. I want that. Uh, I drove a four wheel drive, but never four wheel drive. So that season uh, in Germany, that is seven, I think. And on the end, yeah. they were happy of what I did with them. Ask me, what do you want to do next? I say Ali. So, so they send me in BTCC. With the right. Oh, so they sent you right. Okay. Wow. I mean, and that, yeah. that was uh, uh, that 98. And with the front wheel drive. Was... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... I mean, obviously, you'd raced um, in, uh, you know, over here in the UK and the, 
in the cold and the rain and <laughs> and everything else that we throw at you drivers over here um so i guess you knew you know you knew some of the circuits you and you came to the btcc this is where a lot of people tuning in will know you from um i think because uh you know you had you know some amazing years there um you, you came over with audi um and i mean what was the appeal to you of the british touring car championship because over here we like to think it's a bit different to all the others it's a bit more you know elbows out and <laughs> um was that part of the appeal for you yeah but, you know the beat is the best uh, uh touring car championship in europe uh, um in fact uh, a lot of drivers uh, in UK, uh, I learned okay, in, uh, when I was in F2 with, uh, and uh, I wanted to be to be there and that I did uh, a good part of my car. That was with Saudi, then the program stopped, stay in touring car, and then Vauxhall proposed me a stay six seasons with, uh, uh, with me. Okay. So in total, I did three, and uh, it was it was very yeah. No, brilliant. I mean, and when you came in, I mean, it was it was in that time where we had a lot of drivers from overseas coming in, uh, you know, to the championship, super touring era, lots of money, all that kind of stuff. Um, did you have any expectations coming into the? coming into the series, do you think we can go there and challenge to be champions or was it just a case of seeing how it went in that first year? My, I started the BTCC with uh, our day because uh, uh, we had the Danube tire, we drive and, uh, and that car was as well developed uh, as we want. Um, I think the combo between the car and the Danube was not the best combo. Um, it, it was a new the French, Italy, Germany, Spain. I have uh, a bit of it in the UK where I was feeling. I, I thought at that time uh, a good future. Uh, in UK, because it was so many cars, so many things in '98 or '99, it was so many. Cars. Okay, it was all, all in UK. Uh, almost considered that was the world championship. Right. Wow. So yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people see that time in the British Touring Car Championship as like the golden sort of time, you know, all the manufacturers, big backing, lots of drivers, different cars, that kind of a thing. Um, you had that first year um, in uh, in in uh, sorry with Audi, and you got some podium finishes. Um, one up at Knock Hill, a circuit like no other. Um, <laughs> this uh, Knock Hill is an absolutely bonkers circuit, um, but then. Did Audi step away from the BTC? So you went to Triple Eight Racing with uh, Vauxhall. Um, oh, there we are. Um, you went to Triple Eight Racing with uh, Vauxhall. Um, how did that um, come about? <laughs> oh, hang on. I think the I think the sound might have gone again, and we're upside down. Yeah, I think, oh, the, uh, your sound is cut out. Folks in the comment section, can you uh, just see, uh, can you just let us know if the sound is working? Please, folks, thank you. See, this is the thing with live, going live. You don't get this with these scripted podcasts. This is fun. <laughs> no, the sound has gone again. We've got an upside down picture and uh, no sound. Right, someone's just said in the comments that they can hear me, but we can't hear Ivan. So, 
This is good, isn't it? Just while um, we've got some radio silence at Eban's then, we've got two more live chats coming up. Uh, next Wednesday and the following Wednesday, one biker, one BTCC driver. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, we're going to see if we can get some... Um... Oh, I was saying yes, the sound hasn't been good at Ivan's end, but that's probably because he's up in the uh, up in the mountains doing some ice racing. And the picture's upside down. <laughs> it looks like we're going racing at Bathurst at the moment. We're upside down. Oh, it's frozen a bit. We might be having some uh, some internet connectivity issues. Um, perhaps at Ivan's end. It seems to be okay at my end. Uh, but do bear with us. It's okay. These things happen when we go live. We deal with it with a smile. Um, as I said, though, we've got another live chat next Wednesday, uh, which we'll be announcing this coming Friday. Uh, if you're a if you're a BSB fan, you're going to want to tune into that one. And if you're a fan of old school BSB, uh, BSB, old school BTCC from back in the 80s, um, you might want to tune in on the 14th of December as well, because we've got someone synonymous with the RS500, which is uh, always a very good thing. Um, and we've all, and we've already arranged a few for next year as well. So uh, do stay with us. Um, I think. Oh, Ivan's got the. Oh, there's there's the football on. We can see the footballs on. <laughs> uh, just wondering if the picture is better. We've got the same issue as we had slightly before we came on air. It's a we've got a slight audio issue. I think people are saying they can hear me, but not you, Ivan. So I'm not sure what's happening. Um, Big Hammer. Just going to play with some of the sound settings here, folks. Uh, talk amongst yourselves or put some comments uh, in. We'll uh, happily read some comments about your memory of racing in the BTCC or anywhere else. And uh, we're going to come to a very interesting piece of BTCC history in a minute. Um, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be good. A certain rivalry with a certain Englishman. Um, <laughs> it looks as that, yeah, we, oh, no, uh, he's just hit refresh. So anyway, uh, we're going to come up to the bit about Jason Plato very soon. This is going to be a lot of fun. I do hope he's tuning in. Uh, but thank you everyone for bearing with us. Uh, this does happen sometimes with, with live chats. Um, luckily, I'm a bit of a motor mouth, so I can just fill in gaps and bits and pieces. Um, David Pattinson, Plato's playing with a voodoo doll. <laughs> well, yes, he's probably, yeah, well, Jason doesn't live far from me here. Maybe he's just up the road there. Yeah, with a, yeah, with one of these, little, I, maybe he's got that Christmas elf, the elf on a shelf with uh, Ivan Muller's face on it with pins. Jab. Okay, hang on, Ivan is back. We're just going to see if we have audio. Do you hear me? Hey, there we go. We have audio. <laughs> okay. We can blame technology. We can blame technology. It's out of our hands. <laughs> yeah, um, we are we are capable to go in the moon, but uh, we still struggle yeah. connection. Yeah, I think that might be the next one. We'll have to try and do one of these from here to the moon. That might be one. Um, <laughs> Elon Musk, we we'll get him involved. Yes, everyone's saying we can hear you now. Wonderful. So yes, um, we got as far as uh, the move to Triple Eight Racing with um, uh, with uh, Audi. Obviously, it was set up by Derek Warwick before uh, with Audi. Sorry, with Vauxhall. Um, that car was good from the start, wasn't it? You know, the Vauxhall car that you had um, at the time. Excuse me. Um, and uh, you know, your teammate was uh, John Cleland. I believe it was his final year in touring cars. If correct me if I'm wrong. Um, just a few words on John because he's a bit of a hero over here. Um, he's great fun, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was great to to be the teammate of of John because uh, John was uh, was the reference uh, of touring car and yeah. especially on BTCC. Um, but uh, uh, unfortunately, that season, uh, yeah, the car was uh, was really shit, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were we were on the back of the grid all the time, and we really, really, really struggled. So, uh, fortunately, 
the car improved the following years, but that season it was very complicated uh, for John and myself and for the team in general. But uh, the atmosphere for that season was complicated. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh, someone's just said that we can hear you very clearly now, so that's fine. I've been able to hear you the whole time, but everyone else can as well. So that's fantastic. Okay. Um, but no, that, no, that's great about John. Um, yeah, we, he came on for a chat last year, and uh, oh dear, you know, I was there was a lot of laughter. <laughs> but um, but aside from that, you know, what a great driver, as you say. But yeah, I mean, you touched on it being a very difficult um, year. Um, someone has just commented, actually, perfect timing. Uh, ben Keating. Good evening, Ben. Uh, it says, uh, hi, Ivan. I still remember your very gutsy pass on Anthony Reid and Laurent Aiello at Brands Hatch in 1989 <laughs> to take your debut BTCC win. I remember that very well. Um, that must have been a great moment for you, you know, to you know, to pass those guys in the way you did and to take that win. Uh, you know, that, that year, it was not a lot of uh, uh, opportunities to, to win a, uh, a race with the car we had. And um, I had that opportunity. It was on the last lap. It was a fight between Anthony and, uh, and Laurent. And I, I used that fight to, to go on the third position, the right, and I, I win a race. That, that was the sort of maneuver I had to do to, to win a race. But uh, that opportunity came only once that season yeah yeah sure i mean it as i said it wasn't the uh you know it, it wasn't a season where you were running up at the front but um just very quickly on brands hatch i don't know why every person i have on here to come on for a chat we always end up talking about brands hatch even like mario andretti danny sullivan these guys they and willie t ribs they all speak very highly of Brand hatch um was it a circuit that you enjoyed racing at yeah absolutely uh, you know, Bonsage is sort of the circuit where th there is a history, uh, uh, first of all. And um, that first corner is is amazing. Yeah, then you go up here, you arrive in Druids, you come back. So mm -hmm. when you do the short circuit, you do paddock bend uh, very often. But if you go on the long circuit, then you have the back chicken. I think they changed now, but uh, yes, the past, right we, now, yeah. yeah, it was a chicken, but we even jumped. We we went four wheels in the air, and uh, no, it's it's uh, it's that that circuit is one of the the amazing circuit uh, I I was lucky to drive. No, fantastic! I'm I'm so glad no one's ever said anything bad about it because it's it's one of my favorites. It's about an hour and a half that way for me. So uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I'm so glad you, yeah, you, know, you said that. Um, you moved to 2000. Um, excuse me. <coughs> uh, you moved to 2000. You had uh, a teammate was um, was like Vincent Radamacher and an English chap, uh, Jason Plato. Um, he actually has <laughs> a smile. Um, he actually uh, came on for a chat about two or three weeks ago. We're trying to organise part two because he. Yeah, he was talking about a lot of things. He said that you um, clashed a few times. I mean, was it was it difficult working with Jason just because of his personality, maybe your personality as well? I've, I've always wondered. <laughs> no, for, for, for sure. yeah, I, I think, um, I don't know if you talked with Derek Warwick about it, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I talked with Derek a while, yeah. <laughs> I, I think he lost some air. To uh, to manage uh, Jason and myself, I, I can't say I can't blame only Jason, uh, but he can't blame only me. Uh, we sure. we are two strong uh, character, and uh, we all wanted both of us wanted the same thing, and we were capable to do many things to uh, achieve that uh, that goal, and um, it, it, I think it was. Uh, Clearly compli complicated for the team, uh, for Ian Harrison, for uh, uh, Derek Warwick or, or uh, Roland Dane. It, 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 was, it, it was a drama for them to manage us. <laughs> it's, it's probably why Derek is now living on the island of Jersey selling cars. <laughs> he's just, <laughs> he stepped away. Um, uh, someone was, uh, ben Keating has just said that it's it's one of the best rivalries in the BTCC. Um, I think we all enjoyed uh, watching it because you're teammates as well. But but within the team, was it a difficult atmosphere? Because you were, were you officially number one driver? 
in the in that team, or was it just the way it? No, no, I don't think it was a it was a favorite driver. We were all on the same uh, same line. Uh, he was not the number one. I was not the number one. It was okay. The best one uh, will will be on the front. We'll win the championship, and that's it. Uh, but it, it was no favorite. Okay, okay, that's good. Because I remember Jason saying he got annoyed. I think it was at Thruxton when uh, uh, the team asked him to give you the place back in like the second or third round of the season, and he wasn't particularly happy with it. But um, but team orders are team orders. I mean, uh, I see Jason that. getting too old. He can't remember everything. <laughs> Completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope he's tuning in somewhere. Please, but yeah, no, that's fine. No, it's all fine. I mean, I'm not going to go down the controversial route. I'm not going to, because there's just no need. Um, but obviously, we're, we're on the like the 2000 season. Um, this is when, was that the year where the Mondeos were just, they were just off when they, they were so quick um, with... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, um, Alan Menu, Rickard Rydell, and uh, Anthony Reid. I mean, they were. I mean, w was it just a case of almost having to accept that those guys were just quick? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, um, the combo between the drivers, the experience of the drivers, uh, the team, because if I remember well, it was Pro Drive plus uh, yeah. the budget they had. Uh, the the three combination was uh, was the the best the top they could uh, they could find and uh, I was uh, probably still a bit young in terms of touring car to be capable to give to triple eight uh, the the um, the good direction technically to improve the car same same for uh, for Jason and uh, and that's why we couldn't be at their level. Uh, if that would happen with uh, five years uh, more or later, uh, it would be different because my experience was uh, much, uh, much different. But at that time, we were as Triple Eight and us as a driver, we, we were a bit down. Yeah, quite a young team, I suppose, in terms of the series and the drivers. And, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was saying that, uh, yeah, uh, but you took a couple of wins at Thruxton. Uh, I think Thruxton's my closest circuit. It's a circuit that I really like. Um, I always like asking people who aren't from the UK what they think of our circuits, just various ones. I love Thruxton because it's just crazy, it's fast, it's grippy. And um, was it uh, was it a circuit that you like to race around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had some big moment over there. Uh, especially in the, the fast corner or end of the straight when Jason pushed me once. I think we all saw that video very often. Yep. Um, <laughs> but uh, a complicated circuit, but uh, a typical English circuit in the good way. And uh, yeah, it was always a, a good momentum to go there. Uh, I remember especially Sunday morning, we had to do a stop because it was a church break. So we couldn't drive that hour, but uh, after oh, that, gosh. it was fine. <laughs> you couldn't drive because of the church, of course, yeah, with the bells go off. Yeah, you got to be quiet. Crikey, I don't know if they still have that. I think I think they still do. I'll have to look into that. Um, but yeah, God, I, f I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, moving into 2001, uh, James Thompson uh, joined the team. Um, obviously, you know, very, very good driver. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, James Thompson. Um, and you moved to the Astra. Was the Astra just a better car? Was 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 the Vectra getting a bit old? And well, I can't say it was a better car because it was technically it was a, even the rules was different. Uh, we 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 passed to something different, and uh, but for sure that was a car which was capable to win a championship, uh, which it was complicated before. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I mean, did you have any expectations to be? challenging for the championship was was that the aim of the sea uh, of of that season with the new car uh, or was it just a case of again being quite a young team just finding your way with the car no no the expectation was to win the championship and i think we won the championship that uh, that season or jason uh, uh james won no, the championship did, yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure but it was a great fight all season 
we were very close to each other. And uh, but unfortunately, I think he he, he win for three three uh, three points. But at that time, yes. when you had to do change the the engine, you had a five point penalty, something that like that. And I did change too many times the engine during the season. Okay, that was the part of the rules. Yeah, and it's just one of those things that perhaps stops you getting that championship. Um, I mean, I was. Again, I don't want to go back to this, but it was the, again, the incident with Jason Plato at Silverstone. I'm not going to talk about it for too long. He said that you slowed down and he's got, he's, and he's got it in his book. He's got all the data and all that kind of stuff. Um, what happened from your point of view? Because um, he says it was all your fault. <laughs> well, <laughs> which well, would... <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Tell me what, which action are you talking about? It was Silverstone oh, coming towards the end around Luffield, I think it was, and he bumped into you and went past, and then there was some issue on the podium. I, it's all very messy. Honestly, I have no memories of that. Well, you, you know to, what? Um, it obviously hurt Jason more. For me, no, but for me, that, that things are so far behind uh yeah. I, I would have expect uh, jason will have forgot that and unfortunately for him he didn't apparently come on jason forget it he was nice we had some fight and that's it sometimes it was your fault sometimes was my fault and that's it <laughs> okay it's next good. next page it's a long time ago let's all move on <laughs> exactly next page now <laughs> absolutely Look further. Yeah, many, many pages. I'm just looking at time. Uh, very quickly, uh, what have we got? Uh, 2002, it felt like a similar year to 2001. Um, Matt Neal came on board and and you came second overall, again, close to the um, close to the championship. Um, you'd come second a couple of times. Um, were you kind of getting frustrated at this point that you hadn't been able to win the championship? Because you'd been so close. I mean, you touched on it with the engine changes and losing points and things. On track, you were probably the quickest out there. Um, yeah, like, like uh, one season at Bonzaj, last race of the championship, I think I was uh, uh, I was virtual champion. Um, it was raining and uh, I don't remember exactly, but I think uh, Jason crashed, so I was champion at that momentum and thrilled up to the end. Um, I had an engine failure and the yeah. car stopped before the end and I lost yeah, the championship sure. again. And that's happened too many times during my period in in uk yeah okay that is something you have to accept <coughs> um to win is nice is easy to win or to accept to win is much more complicated when you lose but mm -hmm. on the same time you, you you learn a lot of things when you are uh, losing and i think all those experiences uh, uh, teach me a lot for the for the future yeah you, you always learn more from losing than you do from winning. Um, but let's talk about winning. 2003, um, it, you know, the championship finally came your way. I think a lot of people were very happy to see you win the championship that year. Um, it was just very, very consistent. I remember, was it in the first 10 races, you were on the podium in every, in all the 10 races, five wins. I mean, it just felt like everything was just falling into place that year. I mean, did did the car feel different that year? Did it just feel like a, a better car or was it just... Because you were just on it the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but uh, I think I was uh, uh, enough unlucky the, 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 the season before. So one year, I, everything has to, to, to go well, at least uh, that season. And uh, yeah, like, like when you win a championship, most of the time you arrive on the end of the season and you you think oh that okay the season is over and uh, it went very well and it was uh, on the end it was not that complicated and right. uh, and and you realize afterwards and that is, that was uh, one of those seasons where everything goes uh in the good way uh, yeah. easy easy yeah okay uh and uh, and on the end we won the championship yeah you know you just sort of you know you, you sort of like turned up got in the car drove one and left <laughs> it 
But yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and next one, I, I have I have a, a story to tell you that that if I remember well, last race was Ulton Park, and um, my engineer saw so we won the championship. We had a drink after the race in the motorhome, etc. And then um, my engineer drove me back at Luton, and I was at Ibis Hotel around uh, 11 o'clock on my own, champion. <laughs> On my Ibis uh, hotel at Luton Airport, waiting for my plane for the next day. Uh, that, that was the worst party of my career. <laughs> the perfect way to celebrate. There's nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything bad about Luton, but it 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 wouldn't be my first choice of a place to have a championship party. I'll put it that way. <laughs> no, but especially on my own. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wherever where you are, until you are with your team and you can have a, you can have fun. But now here yeah, it was okay on my own uh, at at the hotel and uh, waiting for my plane. Uh, the yeah. the good thing I, at midnight I was at bed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, wow, that's amazing! What a way to celebrate a championship. Um, <clears throat> Um, 2004, just very quick, I'm keeping an eye on the time, 2004, I mean, I think a lot of people that I've spoken to see this as one of the best sort of seasons in the touring car. Obviously, it didn't go your way in the end, um, but um, I think, was it you lost by a point or two or something like that that year? Um, I just remember it just being you and James Thompson, very, very, like, clean, very clean racing, Um but hard racing. It was. I, I just remember that year being exceptional to watch. Who, who, who won that season? It was. Uh, it was uh, James. I think it was James. Yeah, two thousand four okay. was James. Yeah, and yeah, but it was close. We, you know, I, I had James as a teammate at Vauxhall, and then I found him again at Seat later, and then at Alfa Romeo, etc. On some other team, but uh, it was always uh, a hard race with Jason, with James, but uh, always clean and fair. And uh, James uh, was a gentleman. And um, yeah, I, I, I believe I am half of the gentleman. So uh, things went not too bad between us, or even very well. It was a lot of respect between us. And there is still a lot of respect between us. No, terrific. That's that's excellent. That's excellent. Um, just before we wrap the BTCC thing up, um, Mark Wagstaff, he uh, runs um, uh, a, a company, they're called like BTCC Blueprints, and he's got um, a mug with your car on it. And, uh, you know, and I've got loads of their stuff here. Very, very good stuff. Um, and he said, uh, he said we, that uh, if we can arrange it, which we can probably do after we finish talking, uh, they'd like to uh, send you one of uh, one of their mugs with... Uh, with your car on it. So uh, if we can sort that out at the end, that'd be great. Yeah, with pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, really good stuff. I don't I don't have one handy, a mug of theirs, but I can, yeah, anyway. Um, so that's great. So just very quickly, before we wrap up the BTCC thing, 2005, um, uh, Honda and the Integra came along um, and just, Matt Neil blew everyone out of the water. Um, that's got to be annoying when someone comes along with a car that's, you know, turboed and boosted and God knows what. Um, as a racer, does it, <laughs> when you see a car that's much, much quicker than yours, does it get, you know, do you think, oh God, does it, <laughs> does it become hard work? To, to be honest, I don't really re remember that, that season sure. and probably that, that season was, uh, uh, was the last. Um, it, it was. Uh, it was. It was clear that would have been my my last season because after seven years in the same same championship, it was time for me to do something else, and especially some teams in European Championship or World Championship. They 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 asked me to go there and I refused for two three years, and then finally I say okay now I have to move. And okay. my mind was somewhere else. Yeah, so you were already looking at the, well, it was the WTCC then, wasn't it? Um, um, just <laughs> one final thing on BTCC. Your, one of your teammates was Paul O'Neill, um, who now does the uh, TV coverage uh, for the British Touring Car Championship here in the UK. Brilliant character um, from what I can, I mean, I've met him a couple of times. Absolutely great guy. Um, I'm just wondering what your 
thoughts on on Paul uh, were because uh, he's another Clellan, I think. <laughs> It, it, great guy, fantastic guy. Uh, nice to spend a, a season with him. Nice to have a party with him. We did <laughs> we we did few to together. Uh, I struggled to be to be honest to follow him. Uh, no, no, a, a very great, as you said, a very great character. And uh, that season, it was James Thompson and Paul O'Neill in the same team. Uh, you cannot expect a better teammate than these two really? guys. Oh, that's that's lovely to hear. Um, because you know, from the outside looking in it, they they always look like great guys, and uh, no, that's that's lovely to hear. And I'm sure Paul will appreciate that. I'll uh, I'll let him know if he doesn't watch this. Um, so uh, yeah, um, you moved on to the World Touring Car Championship with um, uh, uh, Seat, uh, with the Seat Leon. I mean, there was a lot of guys in that team. That yeah, I, I remember there was, there was it was quite a big project, wasn't it? There was you know like Tarquini and Rydell and Jordi Genet and I think James Thompson followed you, didn't he as well? He, uh, um, I mean that that was that's a very impressive grid for that year, you know, with Andy Prio and uh, Alex Zanardi and Gianni Morbidelli, Rob Huff, you know, Nicola Larini. I mean, there were some big names. I mean, it, was was that the most competitive grid that you had been part of at that time? Do you think? I mean. Because it was a no, heck of a... <laughs> it was a fantastic grid, of course. I I can't say that was the most competitive grid. You know, of course, it was a lot of uh, cars on the on the track. But sometimes you have only fifteen cars, but the the competitivity is still good. It's still complicated to win. It's probably easy to be in the top ten, but to win is always complicated. Sure. Uh, so, but yeah, that that season it was uh, uh, yeah it was five quick drivers yeah. uh, in Seat and we we were all uh, in the same team but um, I'm still uh, today some sometimes surprised of the fact it was five characters but uh, it was uh, a lot of respect between all of us Excellent. no that's again that's good I mean that's something that runs through every season isn't it it's the respect between drivers if, if it's there it makes life so much easier and and it usually is. I'm um, sorry, just one name I forgot from that from that grid. Tom Coronel. Um, we all know Tom. Uh, <laughs> um, he was, I think, the first world touring car driver to come on here a couple of years ago. Um, he's just crazy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. great fun, isn't he? Yeah, but we need this kind of face in motor racing. Uh, yeah, I think it's, he, he spent more time on on, uh, on the social media than uh, uh, to do his uh, technical meeting. Uh, <laughs> but that's why he's, he's still probably racing. And yeah. that's uh, that's why he has the budget to do it. And he's doing very well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we definitely, these kind of drivers is, are important for motor racing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Again, that first season in the World Touring Cars, you uh, you won again at Brands Hatch. Again, yeah, you said it was a circuit that you like, which was great. Um, and you got a podium uh, out in Macau, which is somewhere I'd 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 love to go. Um, is it is it as challenging as it looks to race around there? Because it looks like it, it just looks absolutely crazy <laughs> with the Melco hairpin and all that. Is yeah, it is it is crazy, and uh, but you know maybe. Maybe um, I think um, I probably I will never race again in Macau in the right. future. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not sorry of that, but because I'm very pleased to uh, I, I had uh, I don't know 15 time opportunities to to race over there, and uh, I'm really really happy of that. Uh, I am I feel very lucky of that, but it is a crazy circuit. Uh, it's very challenging. <coughs> Sorry, is very dangerous, um, but yeah, there is uh, the the atmosphere of of Macau. It's crazy, and most of the time is the last race of the championship, and you play the championship over there. So you 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 have to manage <coughs> the the tension of uh, winning a championship plus the fact to race on this kind of circuit, which mm. is crazy. Yeah, I'm sure. On the, on the subject of Macau, I've just remembered something. We uh, I had um, Alan Hyde came on here for a chat, um, and he speaks very highly of you. He said that um, it was 
um, the action off track was as crazy as the action on track in Macau. He said, <laughs> you guys have had some great sort of parties and stuff out there and had some good nights. And um, But yeah, um, and Alan did say, if he's not tuning in, Alan, um, I did say that I'd say hello for you. Uh, so yeah, Alan Hyde says hi, and he'll be in touch. Thank you very much. No, but uh, yeah, about Macau, what, he, what, what happened at Macau, stay in Macau. <laughs> <laughs> all all the stories stop on the plane <laughs> exactly yeah right moving on <laughs> um do you want to talk about 2007 you had a great battle with andy prio obviously um you know uh, one of the uh one of our british drivers um and you switched halfway through the season you switched to the tdi um car and it just seemed to sort of it just yeah you know, the results seemed to improve that year i mean was it was it a was it much different the car when you changed? Oh well, yeah, it was a big difference. But also, um, it was one of the engineers at Seat. Uh, he decided to go on the TDI, which was a bit of a crazy uh, idea at that time. Yeah. And uh, uh, Seat uh, boss uh, Jaime Puch came to us and say, "So we plan to do two cars on the TDI uh, for mid-season. Who want to do?" I say me, as I did uh, for the front wheel drive Audi, as I did for many things like this. I like this kind of challenge. I like the, to to develop this kind of cars. Now I have more experience to do it, so let's go for it. And it was it was a good move, but it was very different to drive, very different to set up. Uh, it was not noise, which uh, just that. Uh, I could hear some noise I never heard before uh, because really? the air was quiet. Um, yeah, and I had a, it, it was a great challenge because it was a lot of things to uh, to relearn. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something you've got to do just in life, you know, whether it's racing or not. You've got to try and learn new things. Um, you know, you're never, never told to learn new stuff. Um, 2008, I mean, the, the car, yeah, it was, it was the same car. You'd obviously got, you'd spent some time in the car and you'd, and you got used to it um because you just missed out on the title in 2007 2008 um it again it kind of went it kind of went your way um but it was it was close again for that year um I was, it was like you and your teammate you know Gabrielli Tarquini uh, again who has come on here um he said that um there was one weekend he said that year was Estoril where he struggled and you came second or third and he, that's where he felt he lost the title to you <laughs> um just what was just wondering about your memories of that season you know to win your first world you know your first world um uh, 2008 uh, you mean eight yes yeah but that yeah first i lost the, the 2007 championship on the last lap of macau race macau, i was yeah. uh, i was leader of the race and virtual mm. world champion uh, when the the engine stopped uh, one lap to the end, so yeah. it was uh, very frustrating, as you can imagine. Yeah. And then I kind of wasn't sure whether I should mention that or not. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's part of my of my career. And uh, yeah. but it was uh, yeah, it was it, it was tough to swallow that one. And, sure. uh, and to be honest, I still not uh, uh, digest digest uh, completely that one. Still but then uh, two thousand eight. Uh, yeah, we we fight at the championship with uh, with Gabriel, and I won the championship, and uh, and also there it was a lot of respect between us all season, like it was in two thousand nine when he won. Yeah. Uh, we even at Macau at the last race, we we been at the hospital all together. It was James Johnson was waiting us, Gabriel and me. We crash uh, on the same time on qualifying. And, yeah. uh, and and two days later, we had to, to fight for the championship. But wow. it, it was great. Um, for me, that year, I didn't uh, lose the championship. I was happy for Gabriele to win the championship. Yeah, yeah. It didn't feel like, yeah, it didn't, yeah, you, you didn't feel bad that he'd done it. Because, I mean, he's such a nice guy as well, isn't he? He's such a nice guy. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, two, uh, 2000 um, and end of 2009 sorry you moved to Ray Mallet with a Chevrolet uh thing and I when that happened I kind of thought 
It's a bit strange because I, mean, I didn't know how good the Chevrolet was going to be um, because it had been okay before, but um, they went kind of all in, didn't they, Chevrolet? I mean, what, what was that like to drive, that car? Because Well, I think the car in 2009 was not that good. Huh? Mm. Uh, the car was capable to win some race when it was reverse grid. The car was uh, capable to be on the podium sometime, but to, yeah. to win races or, or championship, they, it was not really uh, capable. Sure, but yeah. uh, when uh, Remaloc uh, Racing um, asked me to to join them, uh, I thought, okay, another target, another uh, challenge for me, which I want to achieve, and um, and the fact. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the work we did together, we won the championship straight away in the first yeah. season. Uh, yeah, and I said, you know, I said that you took a, like a win in the first match in Brazil, and then you took, you, again, you won at Brands Hatch, you won at Monza, but you had like nine second places. I mean, it's just so consistent throughout the season with, you know, with the results and the performance of the car, which is obviously the key to winning the championship. Um, but I remember watching that year and it always felt like you were going to win it. I, I, I When I was watching it, I thought, whatever happens here, Ivan Muller's going to win this championship. I mean, I guess it didn't always feel that way for you. <laughs> yeah, as as it was uh, in the BTC when I, was, I won the championship, everything went well. Everything I was trying to do was working. Uh, no problem on the car or no major problem on the car. Uh, every race was good result, so no, it was, everything was perfect. Yeah, and I guess it's a bit more enjoyable to win the, yeah, to win the title that way. Yeah, and there's, not, there's not so much nerves. Um, let's have a quick word about 2011 with Rob Huff. Um, obviously, again, another English racer. You know, we've 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 had one or two that are quite good. Um, I mean, you and him were just so much better than everyone else that year. Uh, it was just incredible to watch. I think between you going before the last round, you'd won 16 of the 24 races between you. I mean, you were just, uh, you were against Rob. I mean, what was the atmosphere like in the team that year? Um, and how was it with Rob? I mean, was it? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was not as hard with, then with uh, Jason. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it was hard. It was not easy when you have two drivers uh, with strong character yeah. are playing for the championship in the same team. Uh, you can imagine uh, inside of the truck. Sometimes there is uh, there there is some uh, <laughs> some discussion. But uh, yeah, that 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 was part of of the game. Yeah, it's, it's all part of it. And um, I mean, I just. To touch on that season again, we were at Macau, the final round. You're leading going into the championship, but you know Rob's just there over your shoulder. Um, did you have like a plan going into that round? Because he ended up winning the, the last two races, didn't he? And I mean, were you, were, were you worried? Were you thinking, oh no, <laughs> here he comes? Uh, no, no, it was no plan. Uh, of what I remember, it was no plan except to try to be front of him because sure. it was the only choice to to win uh, the championship. But yeah. it was no nothing special, I think. Yeah, no, sure. And I mean, you yeah, you took second and third. You took the. Ch I mean, it must have been amazing to th win that third championship that year, a, a three-time, you know, world touring car champion. After all, near misses in the BTCC. I mean, comes because you went second, second, first, second, second in the BTCC. So to actually get those those titles that I felt you had, you know, that you should have won <laughs> uh, back in the BTCC, was that how it felt for you? Did you think I'm finally getting these championships that you feel like you had deserved? Yeah, but you you know, to win championship, of course, is is great. But uh, where uh, the point where I am proud, uh, it's the fact to to be during last twenty years very consistent and yeah. where uh, and always there to to fight for the title. If you look my seventeen years of uh, uh, world touring car, I finished fifteen times in the top three. Wow. 15 times in the top wow. three, and, and that was with different cars. 
uh, four or five different manufacturers. Yeah, so yeah. that that is, I am much more proud of, of this uh, yeah. than to okay. I won four times the championship. Yeah, I, I could have won uh, at least five or maybe even six. But yeah. okay, uh, motor racing is uh, uh, is is like that. Sometimes there is some mechanical issue, but. I, I am fighting since the last 20 years for the title every season. Which is amazing. And in, in whatever series you, you race in, that is incredible. Um, it's it, it's amazing. I, I can't think of anyone who's been consistently that close all the time. Um, you mentioned your fourth title. That was 2013. Um, just just blew everyone away. <laughs> you won by 189 points or something. It was some huge margin um and that was not an official car was it not no that was not because the the program stopped in 2012 right and then uh, for 2013 you say okay uh, what we do and um and then finally i found a way with Ray Maloc to found the budget uh I decide that year, I said, listen, we don't have enough budget. You don't pay me. Give me a place on the car. I found a small sponsor and I pay myself like this. But uh, we need to be in the championship. So it was uh, Tom, uh, Tom Shilton, Tom one Chilton. of the car. And I was the other driver. And we did the season like this and we won the championship. But we couldn't win the manufacturer championship because we were a private team. Right, but cool. otherwise, yeah. we had more points than the, than the manufacturer teams. Wow. Yeah, because, I mean, I did see that it wasn't the official Chevrolet team. They didn't, you know, uh, it wasn't. The, if it, but, um, I mean, it's just amazing. I, I didn't realise that. And to win the way you did was was amazing. There, there was one thing. I actually had Tom Chilton on here last year. And uh, we spoke about your race in uh, Shanghai. Uh, again, apologies because you lost the race. <laughs> apologies. But... It was just that amazing finish with you and Tom. I mean, he said it was one of his favourite moments of his career because he's—he actually said he sees you as the as like the greatest touring car driver ever, um, which is very nice of him to say, I'm sure. But he said for him to go head to head with you and win by that, he said he was incredibly proud of it. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, I have to be honest. I don't remember that fight mm. uh, because uh, I did so many races. But uh, of course, of course. Uh, we we had some moments uh, uh, together, and uh, and uh, we, we spent a good season 2013 uh, together. We uh, we help each other quite a lot, and uh, yeah, in Shanghai, I, I think I remember something, but uh, it's not very clear in my mind. But uh, yeah, if you want, I'm pleased. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> good, good stuff. Um, just, uh, yeah, there, there, there are a few went to Citroen. Um, but uh, there was uh, with uh, like Sebastian Loeb and all those guys. Um, but there's like, uh, there's like, um, there's uh, was like Jose Maria Lopez. He won three championships in a row. He just, he, he was impressive. In those three years, wasn't it? It was very good. Yeah, yeah, it was impressive. Um, it was very quick, um, of course. Yeah, um, th there is things I, I I prefer to not comment it, but okay. um, uh, I think it uh, he, he was quite normal. He won the sweet championship. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah, I think I know what you mean. He he was so far ahead. Um, can we say? So yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, not only not only because he was the best, huh? not always. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We'll just leave that there. <clears throat> um, just very quick. Uh, with obviously, there's like the rebrand to the World Touring Car Championship. You're with um, uh, with uh, yeah the team that you're with now with uh, with like, Cyan Racing and the and the Lincoln Co. Car. Um, it, when that came about, I remember thinking, what's that? Because obviously they, they haven't got much of a presence in the UK. Um, that, that's a really interesting sort of team and a car to have. Um, how did all that come about? I'm just interested in that. And obviously you've got Jan on board as well. So, 
Yeah, but you know, in 2016, I decided to retire. Yeah. And uh, when I did my announcement, that was in Shanghai, and uh, I think half an hour later, uh, the owner of Cyan came to me and said, "Okay, I heard you don't want to race, but uh, uh, do you want to be a, a team advisor right. uh, and test driver for us?" I said, "Yeah, why not?" So uh, and I came uh, with them. First, they were with the Volvo. Yeah, and, uh, I worked with Cyan. Uh, I start with the Volvo, and I I, I was test driver, uh, team advisor. Uh, at one stage, I was even the engineer of uh, of um, of Ted Bjork when he won the championship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and I did the last race of the championship as well mm -hmm. to to help him to win, and um, and yeah, and then. And then that was 2017 and 2018. It was no program because the the Lincoln Co was not ready before uh, 2019. So they say, okay, 2018 we don't do anything. We come back in 2019 to win. I say, yeah, but if you want to win in 2019, we we need to be in the championship. Especially it was a new technical rules and new sporting rules in, yeah. for 2018. So I say, okay, I propose you. I engage two cars in the championship with my own team. Uh, we we put Bjork in one car and Jan Erlache in the other car. Yeah. And we do the championship like that. They say, OK, we agree, but we want you in one of the car. So I, I didn't have a choice for my team oh, to, uh, to restart my career and, and to race. And I did it for my team. And that oh, season, yeah. even with a small preparation, uh, a small budget. We we finished second on the championship, and we won the team championship. Yeah, wow. I mean, I just think that was amazing. I, mean, I didn't realize that you'd been almost sort of forced <laughs> into into going racing again. But I mean, it's worked out, and you've been doing it. You know, you've been racing every year since. You know, with um, obviously, you know, with with your nephew uh, Jan. Um, just very I mean, two things. I mean, you, you must be very proud of him. To have obviously won the two championships uh, back back to back, um, is it is it difficult? Because years and years ago, you were a teammate in single seaters with your sister, and now you're a teammate with your nephew. Does it make it a bit difficult, a bit different, having family in the team on track? No, no, no. It's not difficult because uh, I was there for him. You yeah. know, my my career is behind. So he started his career. Uh, we are teammates. Okay, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was, I think, more happy for his victory than uh, for my four victories, because uh, I saw him he, he, when he was still uh, in, in in the belly of my of my daughter, my sister, and uh, and I saw him to grow up, and I teach him everything I know. Um, okay, he's my nephew, but he can be as my son as well. And uh, for me, especially the first season when he won, we finished first and second, second yeah. championship. And I couldn't be more happy than that. And for me, to win five times or four times or six times the championship will not change my life. But for him, it will change a bit. Yeah, to get that first one as well. Um, and it also proved, um, you yeah, know, obviously it was fantastic that he won it. He's won it since. It also proves that um, the older driver, you know, yeah, such as yourself, you know, you can still challenge, you know, you finishing second in the championship. We had Gabrielli Tarquini won the championship again at your expense. Um, but I just think it's great that, we're seeing the drivers, you know, it's it's like not all about the youngsters coming through. Obviously, it's great to have young drivers, but, you know, you, you know, guys like you and Gabrielli can still, you know, you can still go and fight with them, which which, which is great. Yeah, but uh, with the age, uh, it, it's coming harder and harder, of sure. course. Uh, at the beginning, you have your, the experience do the difference, but step by step, of course, uh, the experience are not enough anymore. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, very quick, <clears throat> very quick. Just want to touch on this season. It's been a bit difficult with the tire issues, hasn't it? Obviously, you've only competed in half the season, pretty much. Um, was it the race in 
Alsace, wasn't it? The yeah, the Anno du Rhin, um round where uh, the team like withdrew, and you've not and you've not competed since. I mean, has it been frust- has it been frustrating not being able to go and drive just because of those issues, or was it just if it's not safe, then we can't do it? Yes, it was very frustrating. Especially uh, for the reason why we are not racing anymore. Of course, it was an issue of the tires. Yeah. And of course, it was uh, the one there is an issue of the tires is never safe. No, but sure, uh, sure. I was ready to race. Jan was ready to race. Yeah. Um, and, and and we mentioned to the team. But unfortunately, we couldn't decide anything. We were completely passenger of the situation. And I think it was. Uh, how to say it, it, it was a shame it, it was not enough communication between the promoter Goodyear and the teams yeah instead to to do the answer by the press release come on sit down around the table and yeah. talk like adults yeah. and talk to the people involved never happened yeah, because it was the race in Germany, wasn't it? Uh, the the race at the Nürburgring was you know, yeah. Yeah, problems start at Nürburgring, but uh, was that was the then... race in May. But we we mentioned that in March already. Really. And then uh, and then uh, it happened at Vallelonga where uh, we did the qualifying. We we had the order to come in on the out lap, okay, to not go on the grid, and finally, yeah. Uh, Good. Everybody was saying the problem is only on the link and co, but it's not true. Only four cars on the end of the race. The, sure. the, the, the car finished fifth. He did a speed stop to change tires. So, wow. and they still keep their hand front of the eyes and say, no, no, our, there is no problem. So, but it's very clear that there has been a problem. So, I mean, I mean so that it's very clear that it's been a problem. All season, um, okay, and, of course. And, but and, uh, not just for you guys, you don't want to accept, and when you don't uh, realize uh, uh, what you are doing is wrong, you can't improve. Everybody is doing mistake, but yeah. and we can accept when people is doing mistake, but we can't accept when there is mistake. There is the fact, and uh, you don't want to accept it. And yeah. that's complicated. And then, and then, what it happened on the end? It was a question of ego, of personal, and uh, and uh, what it happened was nice for nobody, and it was helpful for nobody. So I really regret that situation. Yeah, it, it's just been a, it sort of put a cloud over the season for me. It's just been a real shame because uh, you know because it was shaping up to be a great season. Um, and obviously, it all changes next year as well. We're not. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening with with what's going on next year, but we'll have to see, won't we? There's all kinds of things. Um, just, I'm very wary of the time and that it's quite late where you are. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, I mean, yeah, we've touched on the um, uh, on the ice racing, you know, with the with the Trophy Andros, which you've got coming up. Uh, you're a record holder there, 48 race wins and 10 championships. Um, I think that is a measure of how good you are. I've always thought that because driving on ice I mean, I can't even walk on ice, let alone <laughs> drive on it. Um, I mean, I cannot walk either on ice. So. <laughs> I mean, is it? Is it? Yeah, you know, it's it's obviously something that you enjoy doing, and it's another challenge, I guess, which is something that you've said throughout your career. You love a challenge. It, it is a challenge, but for me, it's more uh, it's more a pleasure. You know, I, I didn't race since eighteen years on ice. Right. Uh, most 18 years that was my last race in, in on ice it was the last time i drove a car on ice um plus the fact um now since three years there is a full electrical car yeah. i have less expense on that but the only reason i came back here is first is my team secondly last year we finished second at the championship with the same point of the winner but right. we lost because we had one less race win than oh, the other, right. and that's sense. and that's because it was Jan, and that because Jan was on his own and he was not helping 
he, he, he didn't have a, a, an help, a good help enough from his teammates. Right. So I thought, okay, let's go to be his teammate and maybe I can be helpful. Yeah, we'll try and try and go one better this year. Excellent. No, I mean, I'm 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 looking forward to it. There's some great names in the in the event as well, which is always great to see. Yeah. Um, just want to touch on your time um, in the uh, in the 24 hours of Le Mans. Obviously, um, unfortunately, two uh, two retirements. But um, was it something that you always wanted to do, going to Le Mans and racing? And no, I think because uh, I had that opportunity, but I am not a big fan of it. Uh, yeah. But uh, but my next target will be to go to Le Mans 24 hours as a team, and that is oh, our target for 25. Oh, I'd, oh, I'd love to see that. That would be something else. That'd be great. Um, and similar kind of question uh, with the World Rally Championship. You had like a few events um, uh, with uh, Citroen, Peugeot, and Mini. Um, I've always, I always think rally drivers, they're just. They're kind of half well. They're very talented, but they're a bit crazy. <laughs> You're going sideways on snow towards a tree, or um, was again? Was it something that you wanted to try? Yeah, you know, I did uh, maybe ten ten rally in my career and three 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 world rally uh, yeah. race. But uh, yeah, it's great. But uh, to drive on on rally is not worse than to drive on the North Life or Macau or Bathurst oh, really? or, or other circuit like that. Uh, yeah, if you are capable to drive with the notes uh, more with your ears than with your eyes, okay, then you can do everything. Wow, that's that's the bit I can't get my head around. You have to listen and yeah, uh, fantastic. Um, Right, well, just like uh, just like to finish up with uh, some fun questions. We always ask some fun questions um, before we let you go and have some sleep. Um, actually, uh, someone has actually commented. Uh, a guy called Craig, Craig Homer. He said, uh, "When you are, um, when you're finished with racing the full size cars, uh, come over uh, to England and have a go at the radio control racing." <laughs> um, they said, uh, "He said you'd be very welcome." So if you want to keep, keep doing that, why not? Why not? Which why one? Not? Yeah. And and in theory you can't get hurt. So, <laughs> but who knows? Maybe it depends on how good or bad you are, I suppose. Um, okay, that's excellent. And Diffan Evans has just put a question in about circuits, which we're going to come to right now. Um, but very quickly, I mean, was there anything else that you would have liked to have done, whether it be F1 or IndyCar or NASCAR or anything, or are you just happy with what you've done? No, I'm happy with what I've done. Of course, there is always something maybe uh, uh, different, but uh, it's impossible to do everything. I think uh, my career was uh, uh, full enough, and uh, I have not much to to regret. No, absolutely. Um, I think you know, just looking back over your career, it's uh, it's just been amazing to me. It's, it's been fantastic, and it's been great to watch as well. Um, What's the favourite car that you've ever raced on a circuit? Do you, do you have a favourite? Uh, the next car I will race with. The next one? The Always next the one. next one. I love that answer. I love that. Um, this is the question uh, that uh, it was, uh, where was it? Uh, Diffan, uh, uh, Diffan Wynn Evans. He says, you've driven on some incredible circuits around the world in different championships. Which was the ones that you liked the most? And which were the circuits that you didn't like so much <laughs> uh i think the north life is yeah. the, the 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 circuit um i like to go but only once a year even once a year is too much <laughs> but uh yeah is is the circuit i love but is the on the same time is is the same circuit i hate to go there yeah um, I'm, I think there's some very good reasoning for that. I mean, it it just looks incredible. I mean, just just to watch you guys go round it, um, it, it's incredible. <laughs> so Especially when you do on the sprint race where you you are driving over hundred uh, percent, it starts to be complicated. I did some endurance race there, but it's completely different. When you have to push as a sprint, uh, is an uh, is another level. Yeah. You're bit close to the edge and <laughs> yeah no sure sure um this is always an interesting question this is the penultimate question um who who, who was your best teammate <laughs> or even more fun who who was the worst 
Uh, uh, it's difficult to find uh, again. Paul O'Neill was a nice teammate. Uh, Tom Shilton as well. Uh, James Thompson was a nice one. Uh, my nephew is a good one. Uh, I am. Uh, Gilles de Ferrand was a nice, uh, not Gilles de Ferrand, uh, Jordan Junior was a nice teammate, Thiago Montero, Tarquini. I really enjoyed all the, those guys, uh, so I can't choose one, so I will say my nephew, come on. Happy days, just, just to keep him happy. <laughs> yeah, just because he's behind the phone, he can hear me. Yeah, I saw him earlier on, yeah. <laughs> it's always got to be young, hasn't it? It has to be. Um, very quick. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, goodness me. Very, very okay. One follow question that's come in here. Um, Simon Steele. Um, what did Ivan think of uh, the abilities of uh, of his sister Yvette? Is that right? Of what? Uh, um, the abilities um, of your sister uh, racing. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, she was very, very good. Um, yeah, but well, yeah, but uh, it's a different generation. But uh, when yeah. when she was racing. Uh, she was quick. She won Formula Three race, uh, national and European championship. Uh, she 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 could have been uh, one of the first uh, women on uh, Formula One. Yeah. yeah. But uh, of course, it was not a space. Uh, but no, she's uh, when uh, when everything goes well, when the car is good, when she's happy of the car, she can she could be uh, unbeatable. Yeah. Sure. I mean, obviously, I don't really because she was a bit older than me. I don't really remember uh, any of her, but uh, yeah, I mean, it would it would have been great to have you know, a female back in F one, uh, you know, way way back then. Um, okay, one final question before my last one, David Pattinson. Which was your favourite British circuit? That's a question from David Pattinson. Was it Brands Hatch or Donington or? Park? <laughs> I like uh, Ulton Park as well, but I would say Brands Hatch. Yes, love Brands Hatch. Great answer. Okay, final one. Uh, this is again very, very difficult. I mean, you've raced against some amazing drivers, uh, against and with. Uh, I've just got a, a list of a few of them here. You've got like Jan Lammers, you're racing against David Coulthard. Um, you're racing against like Paul Stewart, who obviously very, very sad um, loss way back, you know, um, uh, brother of Derek. Uh, you're racing against like, Gilles de Ferran, uh, Emmanuel Pirro, Johnny Chicotto. Soper, Stefano Modena, Klaus Niedwitz, Alan Menu, Ricard Rydell. I mean, uh, Larini Thompson, Tarquini, Coronel Morbidelli, uh, so, yeah, Sebastian Loeb, Tom Christiansen, Andy Prio, Jan Magnussen, Derek Warwick, Nigel Mansell. I mean, so many drivers that you've raced against and with. I mean, is there any in your mind, just one or two, that stand out as being exceptionally good? <clears throat> That's a hard question. It's always a difficult one, isn't it? <laughs> um, you, you know, there is only one driver, which, um, but I, unfortunately, I never race against him because uh, he, we were not on the same generation. Mm -hmm. But um, I was a big fan and he was my hero. He was Ayrton Senna. And yeah. that's uh, that's uh, the only driver. If I if I can be one of the of one driver, I would like to be, uh, to be him. That's a brilliant answer because I'm just going to tilt my camera here and just up there. Yeah, there he is. That's it. And and uh, yeah, he's yeah, he's just so, there's just something about him. That's a great answer. I love that. Um, it's been an hour and 40 minutes you've taken up of your evening. And I know you're very busy uh, with the Trophy Andros. So thank you very, very much for coming on and having a chat. Um, it's 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 been a real honor having you on. Um, I would I would go along with Tom Chilton. So you're definitely with one of the you know, one of the best touring car drivers we've ever seen um, across the world and just drivers in general. Um, and it's been it's been brilliant watching you for the last 20, how, how, however many years it is. Um, so yeah, thank you for, uh, coming on. Thank you for all the, the memories and the action and the, and the fun. And, and I hope you're not quite finished yet. <laughs> Soon. Soon. Oh, well, we have, we have to make the most of Ivan Muller while we can. Um, but no, um, thank you to everyone who's tuned in and for all the questions. Um, I'm glad we got the sound sorted. And thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real, real pleasure speaking with you. Um, You're welcome. 
and uh yeah and uh um, and i'm sorry i was a pest with the emails trying to get it arranged <laughs> but uh no, no, thank you very much everyone uh and thank you to you and, and uh, all the best to you and the team uh for this weekend thank you bye bye good night guys <laughs>